Hello and welcome back to Legends of the Dead. Last time our character died, so now we are doing this episode with our new character, Heisinger. And he is in a very interesting situation. He's got a lot of martial, he's got a lot of prowess. He is really quite set up for a lot of different things. Especially if we can get him into some tournaments, he could potentially start winning and start getting us some items and other such stuff. Which would be fantastic, because if we can do that, then our prestige will go up and everyone will be happy. Now, something is currently causing our prestige to go down. What is it? Uh, unraised men at arms are costing us a lot. That's probably because they're reinforcing. Yeah, it's because they're reinforcing right now. So actually, we're not losing that much because this will all go away. But we are losing a little bit for being under the concubine limit. So we should see if we have anybody who would uh, be able to fill that limit for us. So that's one of the things we want to do today. The other one is I want to answer a question from the comments. It's a very simple uh, question. It was like, what about becoming Kuzerite? So this religion over here. So uh, embracing Judaism. Uh, I just want to show you the problem. So... I was having problems with the holy sites here being spread out, right? Holy sites here are fantastic. They're okay. They're fantastic. Have a look at the holy sites for this religion, and you can very easily see why this one is not on our list currently. The holy sites, two of them... Sorry, actually, this one's even worse. One of them is in Khazaria. One of them is in the Byzantine Empire. One of them is in the Abbasids uh, area. One of them, I believe, is in the, um, yes, yeah, so one of them's in the Tulanids area. And then the other one is in Samarkand, which just is, one, absolute miles from where we are. And two, is in another powerful realm. These are all quite big problems for us. We don't really want to go near any of that. That is all stuff which we kind of want to be more prepared for. Which is why I didn't really count it in the first place. It's the same reason why we didn't go with Tengri. Although Tengri, let's be honest, are even worse with their one all the way over here in Karakum. Wait, where, where's the fifth one for Tengri? One, two... Oh, right. It was, it was hiding right here. For some reason I couldn't see Kutan. But yeah, three of theirs are over here, which makes it even worse for us to get from our current position. But yeah, sim simple answer is quite far away. Right, um, let's figure out what we're doing on this character. There are a couple of different options. I'm kind of tempted to hold a tournament of our own, just so we can get that sort of stuff started. Is anyone holding a tournament right now? No, we want to do a funeral, actually. We should do a funeral first. So maybe funeral raids um, into grand tournament, something like that. Um, I'm also tempted to just take Finland here. Um, and the reason I'm thinking about taking Finland is because this singular piece of land is actually not enough to uh, create Finland, I think, right? Because you need 50% uh, to usurp. Let me just add, actually, I can check that here. Yeah, you need to have three counties to usurp. So, us just taking a singular county off of Finland would actually be absolutely fine for us. And it would mean that we hold two titles directly which would put us equal of our brother, which might be a good thing to do. So um, I think that's something I'm definitely considering. Um, before we do that though, let's hold our uh, funeral. We could also do a runestone. So that would be an ancestral runestone. As for popular opinion, I'm not too worried about popular opinion. None of our land really needs that boost. So uh, let's just go for the, oh, I can also train for a tournament. Can I do that? Yes, fantastic. Uh, raise your prowess for the martial events of an upcoming grand tournament. Let's do this first. Uh, this is a fantastic event because it can get you strong. And then you turn to the right, full key yells, while dealing a powerful blow to my sword that makes me take a couple of steps back. They won't go gentle on you in the tourney, my lord, he says, drying the sweat from his forehead. If you want to win, you can't afford to lose, not even to me, not even once. So it gives you us a high chance of getting strong, a really high chance of getting prowess, and then the worst option is that we get higher progress to victory in the Grand Tournament. So, this is why we're very happy about that. Also, every single champion has a chance of getting prowess. So, let's go. We got strong! Fantastic! Is literally the best outcome. We got extra prowess from it. Strong also gives us an extra 4. We now have 31 prowess. We're insane. Wonderful. Now we've done that training, let's go hold a funeral. Which is a whole new thing for us. So where do we want to hold the funeral? Is there a reason to do it anywhere? 
province with high score gives out piety, prestige, loss, and legitimacy. I guess we'll do it in our capital because none of these do anything. So that seems fine. I pick my capital. Um, next thing, what do we want to do? So we can mourn. So it's mourning for the dead, a critical time for demonstrating piety. Murder, seduce, befriend. Okay, let's just mourn. Um, deceased, we're going to choose our father. Uh, activity options. So you can get minor bonuses. You can get bigger bonuses, or you can get really, really big bonuses. Um, let's just do a normal one right now. Death has come to the realm, and now is the time to host an extravagant ceremony for the deceased. Sure. Manage guests. Uh, that can be all these people. Nobody has a huge travel time. Oh, Oland has a high, high travel time. Oh. My fellow vassal. 91 days. S some of our nephews also have quite a high travel time as well. Um, yeah, whatever. We'll let it roll. Let's just start the funeral. Norail is to be Solvi's final resting place, and I'm left alone to gather my thoughts and prepare for the arrival of the honored uh, mourners. So we gain some prestige there. Okay. How long have we got? Two months. Okay. Keep chilling. Having spoken over dinner for a while, Cecilia leans over to tell me that she finds it impressive how knowledgeable I am about so many different things. She, uh, she recognizes true intellect, I see. Our six-year-old. Okay, fantastic. Three months till it ends. So are these just feast events? No, okay. The shadows of mourners no longer loom over me, and I am at last given a moment alone. What quiet comfort I could take in such a moment without rattling and prattling of other guests in my ears. Just me and my thoughts of Jarl Solvi of Norland. So, is it available because of our mourn intent and it lowers our stress? Okay. Uh, so it looks like mourn intent pr is probably a stress lowering thing. Lordis has become a novice physician, that's good. Before me, a feasting table stocked high with all manner of food and drink, as if Jarl Solvi of Norland was trying to offer a final act of magnanimity before parting. Chieftain Ragnar of Medelpad has so far refused to lay a finger on this banquet, however, swilling his goblet around in idle solace. His middle distant stare falls wearily upon me, and with a quiet nod, he raises his drink high. To Jarl Solvi of Norland, truly one of the greats. So again, this one would give us a stress loss if we chose it. So we can say, great indeed, and I will be greater still. Chance I would get some legitimacy, but also some chance I just straight up lose it. Uh, to Jarl Solvi of Norland gets us 50 piety. Or tell us what he really meant to you. I lose stress because I'm sadistic, and then he gains some opinion of me. Uh, I'll just gain the piety. That seems fine. They're not attacking us, that's fine. Okay, next. The sorrowful line marches on. The last, uh, sorry, the line to have the last moment of Jarl Solvi of Norland. A last whisper, a last long goodbye, a last nothing at the last place anyone will ever see him again. Truly a privilege it is to be here. The line brings me ever closer until, at last, the figure in front of me parts. There is nothing but a veil between me and him. So I can make a speech promising to rule in his honor. Again, it's a diplomacy check. Gain legitimacy if you're good at it. Lose it if you're bad. Or speak of his virtues. Let's speak of his virtues. Next. I feel a quiet calm wash over me, gazing around the room of mourners. Some eyes are stained red. Others would see this as like any other cause for a gathering. One soul, however, looks at me with uncertainty as he tugs at my side. My son Solvi does not weep openly, but does not seem unmoved like many other children present. A Jarl Heisinger of Norland, what happened to Solvi? Why is everybody sad? And say, do not worry yourself, child, or he is in Valhalla now. I say he's in Valhalla. There's a chance we give him existential dread? The characters suddenly recently realized they will die one day. They did not like it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Or we can comfort them with it. Um, well, let's say he's in Valhalla. Our child, um, is traumatized. Wonderful! Good job, us! We traumatized our child. 
Okay. In a quiet corner of the temple, I overhear Nupa chatting with a group of mourners. He somberly gestures me over. We all have fond memories of Jarl Sol Solvi of Norland. I was just talking about the time I was released by Jarl Solvi of Norland. Tell me, what memories do you share? What, you were just telling me of the time where we let him out, we let this person out of the dungeons. So I can say the memories are too painful, we gain some piety. I knew him well, we can roll the dice for more piety, or I have nothing. Let's just gain the piety. I think I'm happy just gaining piety. Morning Star. All eyes fall upon Ragnar as he falls to the ground in lamentation, hands coating his reddened eyes from view. Or, yeah, coating his reddened eyes from view. Ragnar's sorrowful gasps and chokes have left his fellow mourners breathless, and many offer him comfort and reverence as if it were him who was to be committed to the hereafter. Since the eyes must fall upon uh, only me, so we can do a legitimacy check, although there is a chance we get a rivalry with Ragnar. I can only mourn in my own way, or I offer comfort. Uh, who is Ragnar? He's Chieftain Ragnar's Marshal. So, he's not even my vassal, he's my vassal's vassal. No, I'm gonna get the legitimacy out of this. We did, fantastic. I and the other warners take reprieve from our grief to sh uh, enjoy a great bounty of food. Chieftain Ragnar of Medelpad, usually the lifeblood of any feast, now sits across from me misty-eyed with an untouchable goblet at his side. How can we make ourselves fat and merry in times like these? Are we to satisfy our hedonistic desires while Solvi has none? Join me, empty your goblets in libation. The guests seem to agree. There is wisdom in Ragnar's oafish lamentation. So we can join and get some legitimacy. And say a round of drinks for all. And that will actually increase our legitimacy to righteous. Are we currently level 2? So what's level 3? So level 2 is like just short reign. Level 3 is a lot less short reign. And then a huge bunch of things that are cheaper and easier to do. Or remember in my own way. I will spend the gold to say a round of drinks for all. Our legitimacy has just gone up to level 3. Are we capped at level 3? Why can I not? It, does, it looks like we can't go up to level 4 based upon that. But maybe I'm wrong. Your average expected legitimacy. Powerful vassals expect us to be illegit at least illegitimate. At least 0. And vassals expect us to be... At least illegitimate, which is zero. Oh no, we have gone above the number. It's just like we're very, very slightly above the number that we need. Yeah, okay, so that's why it looks like we've hit it exactly, but we've, we're just close. Okay, cool. Uh, we gained a favor hook on this guy. Alright. Of all the figures venerated in Villainous, none have been desired more than our departed Jarl Solvi of Norland. With his crowd of weepers and gawkers finding other subjects to satisfy their fascination, I am at last left with a moment of solace between myself and my father. So we can do a quiet prayer to get some piety, lose some stress, or get unrelenting devotion, get legitimacy ga gain and promising to be a better Jarl. I will take the piety. Our level of devotion just went up. I believe that that means that we at not only get opinion, but I believe that also will give us other things due to our religion? I want to say. Yes, our prowess should have gone up again. Yes. In fact, it should have gone up by two. Which it did? Yeah. Well. Yes, it, it did go up by two. Although we must have lost one somewhere because we were at 30 previously. Let's not worry about that. Heavenly Delight. Ah, what kind of meat is this? So rich in flavor. What are these vegetables? Almost sweet. Oh, and these wonderful little desserts. The feast is some of the best food I've ever tasted. Life has become reaffirmed. We get a medium health boost and some uh, prestige. Lovely. I, lo I love the amount of prestige we got from doing this so far. Dust to dust. Now the time has come to commit Jarl Solvi of Norland's final rites before his final journey into the hereafter. Solvi lays wrapped in fine white fabrics atop a towering funeral, funeral pyre. The Gothi stands beside you with a torch, its light flickering in the wind. I assume it's you because if this wasn't like your father, it would be someone else and that it would have their name there. Anyway. To see him surrounded by so many mourners and given a proper, a sat through burial gives me hope that perhaps I too will be remembered this fondly as Jarl. 
I lower the torch into the kindling and watch as the tower of wood is lit ablaze. All that is left now is to wait for Solvay to be returned to the ashes. So we gain more legitimacy, we gain more piety, and we lose more stress. Okay, so this is really a stress-losing situation. Legitimacy up, stress down kind of task. Okay, well that's cool. Uh, we can petition our liege. For what? Uh, to fortify borders. Do not need them to do that. Okay. Awesome. You can make Thordis Skald into a shield maiden. This is my mother. My mother could be, be a shield maiden. Seems like a great decision. I will make my mother a shield maiden. Okay. These children still need educations and things. That's fine. Our brother still has... N oh, he has a child. Never mind. We have Hokney. I was going to say, still has no children, but he literally just had a child. It's great. Okay. Let's so wait a little bit here. My mother has become a shield maiden. We need a guardian for my son. So, what's my son doing? He's not doing an intrigue one. He's doing a martial one. Let's start with that. So, we'll change his focus to martial. Let us find somebody to educate him. So, uh... Ideally, we're looking for an inheritable trait like... I'm not, yeah, we're looking for this kind of thing. We're looking for quick. That's what I was meaning. Like, quick or intelligent. Or shrewd actually works as well. Yeah. Shrewd with high uh, learning would be fine. Yeah, let's go with... Um, Anun there. Who is a random person who's currently in my court. You shall educate my son. Wonderful. Right. Uh, let's do a little court short, uh, sort out while we're here. Just because it seems at the right time to do it. So courtiers. We have quite a few. Um, let's start with only looking at the unmarried courtiers. Yeah, I think that's actually a good point to start pretty much the whole every time. Because if they're married, then they're probably someone I'm going to need at some point. So you just have a lot of stewardship, but you're not actually doing anything currently. You are a good educator because you're shrewd. Uh, you are definitely not doing anything for us. Uh, these two were unmarriageable last time. Should maybe have a look at that. That's my court chronicler. And then we have you also doing nothing. Is that because we have no... Yeah, it's because these three are no longer champions. That's kind of our main thing. Okay. Um, well. Blind dude who is currently doing nothing for us. Unfortunately, it is time for you to leave our court. So I will find you a spouse. We will matrilineally marry you. You will matrilineally marry... Um, not Sig. I want to find somebody who's in a court. You'll matrilineally marry Sif. There we go. Be gone. Next. Uh, we've decided that you're going to stay in our court. Let's see who we can get. So let's look for a normal marriage. To see what kind of things we're looking at here. Really, really high intrigue. Let's grab her into our court. Next up, we have Hawker. Uh, do we want to keep him or do we want him to leave? He is our only poet. He could stay for now. I think that's fine. Uh, we probably don't want him to marry because he's got homely, which is not a good trait to pass along. Arnie, is there anybody who will marry you with an inheritable trait now? There are. Fantastic. Well... Let's see. Uh, we have some people with some good inheritable traits, actually. Like, intelligent. Let's get uh, Thordis into our court. Wonderful. That seems good. Next up, uh, Hrother. Again, we can grab another good trait into our court. Like, uh, Unar's trait here. Good. Uh, Asta. We want to matrilineally marry you off. Ideally for some prowess. How much has Tyke got? He's got 20? 20 is good. Let's, let's, oh, we could grab him or we could grab someone like Ali who has um, Robust as well. But let's grab uh, Tyke. That seems like that's a good one. Okay. And then next we have Nupa, who has no reason to be in our court whatsoever. Given that we just invited some more people, I'm going to marry him out of our court. Let's uh, matrilineally marry him too. Just looking for somebody who's in a court as already. There we go. We're going to marry you to Gerther. Right. Send him off. 
and we'll let these kind of go through. Okay. Just going at speed 4 here so the game doesn't fly off into the uh, far future, which it will do if we go to speed 5. How's the court looking? So we have two unmarried. Thordis is unmarried. Oh, we should marry her. Uh, actually, we don't want to pass along club-footed either. In which case, this is fine. Yeah, we're, we're actually sorted. Uh, and then, yeah, the rest of that should be good. Yeah, so this is our current court. It should be filled with people who are just quite good at doing their job. Um, yeah, or, you know, shrewd or something similar. Okay, we're happy with that. Uh, next up, I, there was something I was remembering. Is there something we can pay for with holdings with piety? But we could maybe pay for temple stuff with them, but I guess not. Yeah, I guess not. I thought there was some kind of piety thing that we could pay for. But I might be going crazy. Or it might be if it already has a temple, you can do that. Uh, we might want to do an upgrade, though, to something at some point. But we'll hold off on that, because we want to keep our money. Let's maybe go to War of Finland. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to take a singular piece of land off of them. Let's maybe take the chiefdom of Finland off of them. Just a uh, the little bit of land there. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. So, declare war. Actually, before we do that... No, I'm not going to raid the land. Actually... Oh, maybe I want to raid this bit of land. Yeah, let's do that. I was going to say I'm not going to raid the land that I'm about to take. But we could raid the land next to the land I'm about to take. That's something. Let's go raid their uh, capital. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. This can go at speed 5. Raid or trade? Uh, we are... Gonna say... We're gonna pillage it anyway. Because we're sadistic. Hey, you finished uh, the control in county stuff? I think that means we're done here, right? Or is it, or of all of these... 100 control, 100 control. Oh, I think we could potentially remove a... Corruption? Yeah, I think we can remove that. No, has no county corruption, has no county corruption. Oh, is there corruption here? Ah, there we go. We can remove inefficient census. Let's do it. So that will immediately remove that, and then they'll start gaining control. Now I want you to go here and then here. Nickname the Strong. Malish, have you heard what they call you? They call you your your Heisinger the Strong. Spectacular, is it not? Yeah, I mean that sounds like a good name for us. Also, our level of fame just went up. We are now distinguished, which means we get more knights and more people like us. And because we have more knights, that's more champions, effectively. It means that even more people can be champions out of the people that we've just got into our court. Great news. Great news. Right. Yeah, so um, what that did, by the way, when you put this on, because this is something I only found out in the last playthrough. If you have county corruption and you have 100 control, you can do this to lower control by 25 and it will remove the corruption for you. You need to then get control level back up to 100, but it is kind of worth doing. You know, most of these last for like 10 years or something. Anyway, that's fine. Uh, we'll clear those out. We weren't really going raiding for the uh, money. We were more just going raiding because we could. And we'll have a truce afterwards so we wouldn't be able to raid. Let's now declare a war. He has no allies. We are going to declare a conquer county war. We could subjugate him. You can try and make him a vassal. So we take his primary title and then make him our vassal. You can only do one per lifetime. I don't want to do this. The reason I don't want to do this is because we don't have enough prestige. But it is an idea. Now I'm just going to declare my war. Conquer County. Finland. Let's go. We're now going to raise all of our troops here. And we're just going to simply march our way to Finland. I think he's off raiding someone, right? Raided by you. He has a hostage. Uh, can I have a look at his... Ah, there we go. This guy looks like he's wearing a hat. Okay, so he's at home. So never mind. Um, maybe they don't have their troops raised. We check someone else with a hat raised. Yes, yeah, so they're all raising here, actually. So this is fine. Schemer discovered. 
is my wife that is plotting against my wet nurse. I think we already knew that. But we might have learned that as um, our father. You're heading to my capital. I hate you. That's actually a great strategy. Because they're going to be able to siege our capital quicker than we'll be able to siege both of theirs. Let's land on them here. Fantastic. We've now wiped them. Well, we haven't wiped them, actually. We've now won the battle. Which was fairly securely won by us. We lost 60. They lost 265. But it also maxed out our battle war score. So that's good. Right, we're now heading back over here. Back to the bit of land we want to siege. Uh, how much does it? How many people do I need to leave to siege this? I need to leave 400, huh? We could potentially do this fight. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, what's this? Um, you have not cast your vote for the title heir to the Kingdom of Sweden. Oh! Wait a second. You changed yourself to a Scandinavian elective? You did. Oh. I mean, I want to vote for myself, probably. Can I vote for myself? Am I even eligible to be voted for? I can vote for the Queen of Novgorod. That sounds like it's asking for trouble. We cannot vote for ourselves. Okay. Well, in that case... Just double checking. So, who is the candidate? Extended family and claimants. Yeah. Bjorn is voting for... Um... Iriker. So, I will vote for Iriker. Where is he? Yeah, I vote for this guy. Because everybody else is voting for him. So it kind of seems like the correct thing to do. Right. That's fine. We're now going to take this fight. We arrived here, so they didn't break our siege. 500 versus 470. We've also got a lot of Bondi here, which is great. Which are countering their troops. We've defeated them. We're very happy about that. We lost 45. They lost 224. I'm going to pardon my wife from this thing again. My sister can marry. Uh, do we want our sister in our court? Probably not. She's not that good. Um, what gives us the best alliance? Von Iverson Ivering. It gets an alliance with the Suthrajar. Which is where? That is too far away. Potential alliance of the High Chiefdom of the Don Valley. Uh, that could be okay. How many troops do you have? 1.1. Okay. That could work. What's this one? Chelmo. That's also quite close. That's 1.1, basically. That's a little closer. I think Chelmo is good. Let's get a little alliance with this guy. Let's go. You're happy for this? Yep, we're not even going to make it matrilineal or anything. Not that they would say yes. Let's send our sister away. Well, she won't leave it for a while, but we'll send her away in a bit. Okay, cool. We can call upon our ally for this war. Who is our ally? Oh, yeah, that guy. Yeah, no, we don't need to do that. Okay. Chase him. Uh, wait, yeah, wait here. Alliance is formed. That's cool. We'll continue chilling. They just heading home again? They are? Are they just going to walk directly into us? I'm going to walk back in here. Let's see what they do. I think they're going to get us here, actually. That's fine. They're not going to break the siege, but they are going to attack in here. We have defeated them. All their troops are gone. They are now wiped. They have nobody left. Uh, the only three survivors would be the three knights that they had. We'll merge up the armies again. And we will win the uh, war. Although merging might not have mattered because we had a siege leader. So it probably would have been better if I hadn't done it. Let's not worry about it. It won't be too much difference. Our daughter needs a new thing. Is she going to do learning or diplomacy? She's going to do learning, which is what she's already on. Let's find somebody to educate our daughter. Um... Kind of looking for that shrewd person again, honestly. Yeah, we're looking for that guy. Um, my daughter? There we go. That's fine. Yeah, that seems good to me. 
We could go and find other people around the place, but this seems absolutely fine. This will then get us taking war score once we grab this bit of land. Oh, and it was worth 50%, so that's fine. Actually, it was worth four, uh, 81%. Captured some prisoners. Anyone worth having? Uh, Loha, probably not worth having. Pavel, we can get 50 gold from him. Let's do that first. Just let that go through. Thank you for the 50 gold. Martial lifestyle. Uh, I'm going to do... Chivalric dominance to increase our knight effectiveness. Cool. Uh, don't need to do anything with our prisoners. We will now just simply uh, end the war. We'll enforce our demands. It gets us legitimacy. It gets us fame. It's good stuff to have. And it gets us Finland. Also extends Sweden a little bit, which is kind of cool. Right. We have low county control here. So actually, I'm going to switch you on to... Let me do it from this menu. Let's switch you on to doing that. Oh, wait a second. There we go. Now I can do it that way. Cool. So we can switch them over there. It's going to take six years to uh, get control up in Finland. This is still taking up, which is fine. Awesome. We can now station a men at arms unit there. Let's station our Bondi. Oh, um, this band. Let's station Bondi in whichever one is better. So that's Noral. Let's then station our Varangian dudes over here. Great. Okay. Uh, can we petition our liege? We can. Hey, liege. Would you... Oh, I can head get them to try and convert uh, the faith of this place for me, which would be quite nice. Uh, actually, yeah. How long is it going to take take to convert. Actually, I don't even want to convert, do I? Because if I want to switch to this faith eventually, then converting is bad. No. I want to petition my liege, and I want to ask them to um... Yeah, send bailiffs to help us. That's a reasonably l difficult trip. Let's uh, maybe stick in... Hmm. What's, what's the problem? The problem is... County control, but also taiga. Would that be one of these? Uh, no. No. Forest guide? Yeah, forest guide uh, lowers it down to medium danger. Let's do that. Do a little quick travel down to see our liege and ask them if they'll, uh, you know, give us the extra control growth. Wonderful. A jewel demanded. I am Rothholder of Upland. You, you want to duel me. You've got 23 prowess. And you're currently garret ridden, which is lowering your prowess. Okay. I think I would like you to be on my uh, side. Um, I will duel you. There's a chance we win and he's recruited to our court. There's a very, very low chance we're wounded. We have won and we have recruited him to our court. Great to see. Our road takes us through the treacherous parts of Gestricalandia. Uh, while I scanned for dangers ahead, a rustling bush grabs my attention. Could it be a wild animal? As I brace myself for impact, Rothholder jumps out of the bush instead, holding a plant. I'm not going to eat the plant. I'm going to let him eat it. It's harmless, but that's okay. Petition rejected. But hear me out, my, my liege. What if uh, there's room for compromise here? Did that work? I'm assuming the answer is no. Um, yeah, nothing popped up, so I assume that's no. She died in my dungeons? I was going to execute her. I could execute this guy, though. He's been in my dungeons a while and it would lower my stress. But because it will lower my stress, there's no reason to do that. Let's leave him in our dungeons till we get, like, a little uh, stressed out. Great. Okay, well, that was uh, awful in terms of going and visiting our liege. Apparently, you just should not do it if you don't have diplomacy or stewardship. Uh, it has been pointed out, I could, in theory, like, when I go and do that, go, Oh, I'm going to do a diplomacy one. Let's increase our diplomacy by three and do and do the check that way. But, yeah, no. it, like, we could. And it's probably worth doing if there's something we really want. But I'm just not that worried about it right now. Oh, we should do a conquest rune, uh, rune stone on uh, Turku. Yes. One, because it gives us a ton of prestige and legitimacy and piety. But two, because it will increase uh, control. Yeah, let's do that. 
uh, my vanquished foe in Finland. Yes, and that will get us the conquest rune stone, which gives us control growth. Yeah. That's great to see. So now our control should be up a lot more. Um, yeah. See, because that gives us the next row is 0 0.2. Yeah. Awesome. Right, so that might be worth something in a little bit. Invitation to a hunt. Ooh, that's actually intriguing. Who's inviting me? Sven. It's not that far away. Do you want to go to Sven's hunt? Nice thing about hunts, you get prestige, legitimacy, that's a new one. And you can get the hunter trait, which gives you more prowess. Yeah, I mean, I suppose I'm after, I'm trying to get up to 1.5k uh, prestige. Let's go. So anywhere I want to go in the way so I can get extra experience. Or anywhere I want to go afterwards. I maybe want to go down to Roskilde here. Um, let's turn that off for now just to see how dangerous it really is. You will not arrive in time? Oh, so maybe I do need the... Uh... Oh, medical equipment lowers plague danger. That's a new one. Forest guide? It says I will not arrive in time, huh? What if I customize my route? What if I say I'm going to go... Can I not go via the sea? I thought you could go via sea. Maybe you can't choose sea tiles? Hmm. No. I was hoping that might speed it up. Are we just not going to arrive in time no matter what we do? Could hire mercenary guards? Alright, then we get there in time. Costs us a little bit, but it'll be worth it. I think we have to hire mercenary guards and we need to hire the forest guide. Yeah. And we get there three days before it starts. Then afterwards on the route, we're going to head back via Roskilde, which will get us some martial lifestyle experience. We could also... Can we go down to these two as well while we're here? Um... Yeah. Let's do that, and then we'll head back that way. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll join your hunt. It gets us, um, you know, 300 and, sorry, 250 uh, martial lifestyle experience, and we get the going to the hunt experience. Let's go. Right, uh, that seems fine. Off we go. Running behind schedule. Let's hurry. Okay, it said we weren't running behind schedule, though, but... I well, know. I don't know. Maybe we are now. Link's struggle. Our journey is violently interrupted by the sounds of tearing flesh and gnashing jaws, and the desperate cries of a man about to meet his end. The noise is so horrific it must have come from the depths of hell. Attempting to track the source, we find a desperate champion struggling with a wild lynx. His blade is wedged between the beast's jaws, but his grip is beginning to falter. So we can get Folky to try and help him. We can try and help him. I won't risk my life for this. Um, do we want him? No. Alright, I won't risk my life for this. Um, King Bjorn is converting the chiefdom of fi Finland to a satru. That's a message I haven't seen before. I don't know if it's new, but interesting. I wonder how long that's going to take him. Can I have a look at that? No. Okay. Well... There you have it. We arrived in time! Fantastic! That's what we like to see one day before it started. Otherwise known as a reasonable time to actually join one of these. A regent has um, gained me some money. Thank you very much. Right, we're going to hunt a fox. Wild, fl uh, wild flowers. My acquaintance Ivar is crouched down on the ground, humming cheerfully, picking geraniums. He appears to have lost all interest in the hunt. Um. Hmm. So, so what does Stocked Medicus get you now? Still disease resistance. It doesn't do anything for plagues. Uh, get back on your horse. We're, we're going uh, hunting a fox. My party and I stalk through every co uh, cop's uh, eyes peeled for any sign of a fox. From the canopy above, a soft twittering spills forth, growing louder as we advance. It's a nestling screeching for its mother. An agile huntsman brings down a 
fluffy ice, an unfledged raptor chick from the oak. What luck! Only birds caught in the wild can be properly trained to hunt. So we can have it taken back to the muse, which gives us prestige, vassal opinion, and court grandeur bonus for five years. We can put it back, or we can say a gift. One prestige for five years. So you get one prestige per month for five years. That's 12 per year. Okay. Or we can get 150 prestige. I'll get 150 prestige. Peering across the landscape, I suddenly double take. There it is, flowing tail and all. The cunning dog is hard to distinguish, but there's no doubt it's there, observing us through the oak trees. Chieftain Sven thinks for a moment before gesturing to the left. Come, we shall cut it off. Okay, we're ambushing the fox. We watch the fox from our concealed bowline, tensing with anticipation as the flusher's cries uh, and baying hounds grow louder. Chieftain Sven carefully takes aim as the fox hurtles towards us, paws pounding in the mud. The arrow strikes true straight into the beast's heart. So he gains the trait experience. We have finished. There is a fox tail, which we didn't get, and a hunter trait uh, experience, which we did get. So we now get one prowess from that. Wonderful. Okay. So, immediately we got even more prowess onto our prowess sit situation, so we're looking very good there. We got a lot of prestige from doing that, and now we're heading down this way. Um, my lord, there's an ant path here. It may be a tad superstitious, but you should never cross an ant path. My great-grandfather did, and he never returned home. So we can wound our wife as a cure for superstition. I can take over as guide, or we'll find another path. Um... I guess we're going to whip our wife? It's not really a great answer, but uh, I don't really want to spend the prestige. Weird whispers. I've noticed that Gormir avoids me more than usual. He usually sits at the opposite end of the table whenever we're invited to a feast and constantly refuses my company while camping. We may not have the best of relationships, but that attitude is starting to tire me, especially when I overhear him defaming me. Heisinger is a closeted knave. I'd be a way better Jarl than him. This is Gormir, my champion. So we can do a prowess challenge. He, he would leave the entourage and my court. Let my caravan master scold them. And end your days in a dungeon. Get out of my sight or is that the wind I hear? We'll get our caravan master to scold them. The metal man. We've had this event before. Uh, this is basically a do you want to recruit this guy? I do not. So I will gain prestige. And because I'm sadistic, I will also lose stress over it. Steer Bjorn, the Lynx Boy. As we travel through the wild lands of Golinge, I find myself with a distinct feeling of being watched. Hiding, though poorly, I see a frail, dirty boy watching our entourage. A member of our caravan informs me that locals say that these lands are haunted by someone they call Steer Bjorn, who is said to have been raised far away from human society by a lynx. Apparently, the poor creature has taken a fascination with us and has started to speak some basic Norse, though not to any meaningful proficiency. He is slow but strong. So I can train the boy, will ignore the boy, or chase him back to his lynx friends. I will train the strong boy and he will be a very good, um, well, I was gonna say he'll, yeah, I mean, I suppose he could be a very good champion one day, maybe. If, you know, he didn't have all these negative modifiers, which he currently has. He does get 10 prowess though from it, which is quite nice for another five years. I'll train the boy, the son of lynxes. Our regent is continuing to uh, gain me money. And uh, we got martial lifestyle experience for visiting here. And we get this event. My liege, it's not a secret my heart has found a new home far from home. Alas, my soul aches for Bowie. My desire knows no end to her, uh, or his eyes, his hair. I long for just a salute. I die for a word. Please, I beg you, let me stay with him. So this is my mother trying to let me stay with it or let her stay with this guy this guy's actually pretty good i'm gonna recruit him myself does make the king of uh Charland, or king of denmark sorry dislike us but who cares it's not my problem i'm not even independent he couldn't really do very much against me there is now a religious head of the Ka kayarwi bon which is a uh, religion in tibet all right well that's very much not relevant to us. Careful, my liege, there are bandits. You're quick to make that accusation. I'm merely a hermit. Do we want the hermit? No. 
Tell me about my future or let's go. Tell me about my future. A prophecy. You shall find that who seeks. That's the same one our father got. Okay, cool. Get a little bit more martial lifestyle experience and now we're heading home. All the way home. Of travels to come. Come in, O oh mighty Jarl. I can tell you have many miles to go and can offer you a reading of your future travels for a modest price. Okay. Do we ask for a future to be told? I say I'm not interested. Or uh, seal the tent and have the witch burned. Well, I mean, it's not great again, but it gets us some dread and some piety, so have the witch burned. Uh, how is our dread looking? 31 with a natural dread of 35, so it should be ticking up, actually, per month. That's pretty good. Okay. Heading back home. Level of devotion to our faith went up again, so we get some more clergy opinion, but also increases our prowess again by two. We also get a traveler uh, thing here, which gives us one diplomacy and opinion of traveler characters goes up. Run away or lost. We managed to get through a dangerous path in Odmarden. We decide to rest for the night. As I walk around the encampment, suddenly a strange feeling that someone is missing bothers me. I ask around and everyone, ag everyone agrees on one thing, that they don't remember seeing Steerbjorn all day. That is worrisome. He is still just a child. What if he got lost somewhere in the taiga along the way? He is probably... Uh, lonely and more importantly starving and just rent a search party for him find him ourselves or I don't want to risk more people getting lost let's do a search party there's a chance he gets a rivalry with us from it um okay search party we have found him he is now closer to getting a rivalry with me okay we've arrived back wait did that say he's our champion Courtier and ward. Never mind. I thought the city was a champion already, and I'm like, it's a little young. Uh, we could defeat these guys if we want to. These guys who are currently raiding. The benefit of defeating them is that they would not be able to raid us. Let's do it. Raise some troops. Let's go beat them up. New martial perk. Uh, we get extra advantage. That seems good. Friendly facial fatal casualties goes down. Yeah, good if we're a leader. They're running away from us. Well, they needed to, because now they're all dead. Oh, and we get the money from them. Okay, that's good. And the victory gave us some extra uh, prestige. Now we have enough to take a duchy if we want to, which might be just our plan. Maybe we want to have a look at Narland here and see whether we can take uh, a little bit of land off of them. Okay, I don't know why I walked back before doing that. But yeah, we could maybe look at them. Because their land is all within, well, mostly within Finland. I guess there's two bits of land within Finland that we could hold. Yeah, that's probably not a bad idea, actually. Just to continue conquering in that direction. And it gets us quite close to Novgorod. And we could then get Scandinavian elective on this land, which would be good. Uh, you're allied with someone, though. You're allied with the people just above you. So together, you have about 1.9k troops. We maybe want to think about that. Although, we could also potentially do a grand tournament first, but we could maybe do one afterwards. Yeah. You know what? Let's set ourselves up here. Let's declare a war. Wait, would they just accept vassalage? No. <laughs> Thought I'd check. Let's declare a... Let's use our subjugation war on them. That's a lot of land that we're going to get off of them here. Uh, and... Subjugation should be fine because we want to use our invasion against these guys. Um, and we're not anywhere near that currently because we need to be at level 4, which is exalted amongst men, which means we need to be another couple levels of fame up from where we are. Okay. Let's do a subjugate. Actually costs us a lot of prestige to do the subjugation, but that should be fine. We're not going to die. It's not great that that my, my, my plan is just don't die. Also, we're in this war. Oh, right. This guy is in a war. Uh, and then we're helping them because we're they're our liege's allies. Yeah, we don't need to worry. But who are you in a war with? Oh, some guy down there. It doesn't matter. Okay. Cool. Right. Um, we're going to raise all of our troops. And then we are also going to call in our ally from Chelmo. I think that you are the better ally to call in here. Spend a little prestige to do that. That's fine. 
Let's go. Right. Move our way up here. They may be going for our capital. That may be a sensible plan of theirs if they do. Let's hold off and see. Yeah, they're going for our capital. Let's let's run. Okay. Steerbjorn longing for the wild. Steerbjorn has been a real challenge to his mentor. That much is certain. He is scarcely able to string a sentence together and still prowls around like a beast. Life indoors seems to have caused him a great deal of stress. And when he does decide to speak, he speaks almost exclusively of returning to the wilderness. I watch as he stands uncomfortably on two legs and motions to leave, and somehow I know that this time he is leaving for good. So and say, just give me one more uh, time or I'll never forget you. Give me one more chance. Apparently we gain stress because we're sadistic. But yeah, give me one more chance. They're running. Okay, that's annoying. Ah, oh, they're merging. I see. Let's head to our capsule. They're going to join us in our capsule. And now we're in a bit of an odd state. Now we want to head over here, actually. Let's do that. So we're joining in. We have another group fo following us into this. What's this one? We've joined another war. Alright, as a secondary member. We're in here. It's about 50-50 with just us in here. We counter all of their uh, all of their men at arms, which is great. Our champions are great. Theirs are not. Yeah. And our advantage is actually higher as well, which is just great to see. Okay. So we're already kind of winning, and then more troops get added to our side, which is even better. Absolute tribal authority just went up there. He might be about to convert to feudal. However, to do that, he'd need to organize our religion, which he can't currently do it. Yeah, it's saying tribal rulers with non-tribal lieges may settle, but that's not currently our situation. Yeah, task aborted, or we can no longer increase control because it's under siege. Okay. Yeah, there are some people added that aren't very good. They're getting countered, but at the same time, the rest of our troops are very, very, very good. We have wiped them. I, I keep saying wiped. It's not true. We have killed them. We actually didn't come out that much better than them, but we have killed some of them. Uh, we can start increasing control here again. And then we can have a look at them next time to continue our war and uh, hopefully get ourselves some more land. But right now, it is time for us to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.